Praise be to Yevon. That's what I would have said, if I was a follower of Yevon. We were all there, and in one piece. Even if I had a headache from wondering what was in store for us next. Hello again everyone, welcome back to my Let's Play of Final Fantasy X. This is Crow Beak. I have no clue what episode number this is of my YouTube cut. But, yes, we have just been dropped to the bottom of a pond that apparently is not really a pond. The boss we defeated cracked the ice underneath us and we landed down under here. This, I guess, is not super surprising in light of the fact that the Makalania Temple is in a giant cave area anyway. Pardon me while I take a moment to save. But, it's still not what you would necessarily expect. It did look like a lake, and there's no water down here. One interesting thing, if you compare this to Final Fantasy XIII, there's a point in that where they fall and end up in a frozen wastelandy We're kind of area lake, as well. Guys, aren't we? Oh, so everyone did think it was a lake. Look, that's the bottom of the temple. We've fallen a long way. And we are so lucky to be alive. Headache from wondering what's next? How about what headache now, from the fall? Wonder. What now? Uh, you act first and think later, don't you? I mean, can't you be a little more responsible? We're all depending on you, you know? A lecture. No, no, no. <laughs> Just a suggestion. You should place trust in your friends. But you can't expect someone to protect you all the time. You would do well to remember that. Is that a lecture? It's advice. Mentor Orin is a mentor. Let's see. I can barely see Waka, but I know he's there. Yuna laying down hey, over there. Hey, Waka, would you cheer up? I, look, we only did what we had to do. It doesn't matter, don't you see? I've always walked the path of Yevon. But now, I'm a traitor! How could this happen? Damn! It's not Riku's fault either. Huh? <sighs> you don't know how I feel. Sure don't. He is very devout, and this is... This is definitely, like... It's been a series of unfortunate events for Waka, a series of unfortunate face-shaking events. He was really, he was feeling really on top of his faith and justified, especially after the crusade, the crusader's attempt to defeat Sin for good failed. But now, they've basically been branded heathens, not directly by someone, not by someone who's directly part of the church, but someone who is definitely close enough to the church to, to have that sort of influence. Uh, especially with the kind of power that we've seen Seymour possesses. There's no reason I should be unable to talk to her right now. I'm so sure Yuni's okay. okay. She's breathing fine and all. How are Lulu and Waka? Hmm. Well, Waka's in shock. Can't blame him either. True facts. And Lulu? Well, she's just the same as always. She's so together. All grown up, I guess. I guess. <laughs> She's been taking well, care of Waka all the time. Just give me five or six more years. She's better, but. So, Kamari, how do we get out of here? Hey, don't change the subject. We climb. Kimari too. Only those who try will become. Huh? I think he means. You have to work hard if you want to be like Lulu. Oh, I will. Kimari think Riku should stay Riku. Huh? <laughs> More words from him than hey, ever before. Are you saying I'll never be like Lulu? Kimari! <laughs> How can you laugh at a time like this? Now is the best time to laugh. <sighs> Remember your own Blitzball stuff, dude. Yuna? The Waka is in a crisis. I want to confront Mr. Seymour about his father. 
Lord Jiskol. I, I wanted to himself. convince him to turn himself in to Yevon's judgment. In exchange for marriage? Yes, if that's what it took. So, what did Seymour say? He didn't say anything. Now, I... Now I don't even think it was worth it. I should have told you what I was going to do. Yes, you should have. Enough. Dwelling in the past is futile. He is right. Hey, you don't have to say it like that. It's true, though. You want to waste time listening to her regrets? You don't have to say it like that. Our immediate concern is Yuna's pilgrimage. Are you willing to go on? Yes. But then, do you think Yevon will allow it? The Faith are the ones that give power to the Summoners. Not the Temples or the Teachings. If the Temples try to stop us, then we will defy Yevon if we must. Whoa! I can't believe you said that! Sir Oren? Count me out. We have to atone, to make up for the sins we have committed. Of course. It's not like I ever liked Maester Seymour, yeah? No way I'll ever forgive him for killing Lord Jiskel. And for trying to do us all in two, you know? But still, the bunch of us going against Yevon? No way! But still, hmm. we have transgressed. And must face our punishment. We must go to Bevel. We must speak with Maester Micah and explain what has happened. There is no other way, I think. I agree. Uh, Sir Oren? So it is decided. Will you come with us? I am the troublemaker, after all. Yeah, that's right. You can always count on Oren to complicate things. <laughs> Is that yeah. supposed to be a compliment? Kamari roars and Oren runs off and... I never asked you to follow me. Hey, but that's what friends are for. Right? Yep. Thank you. Huh? Friends, huh? Hm. We all act like nothing. wrong. Must got nerves of steel or something. You're too edgy. Listen to the hymn and calm down. And they even address that in the in the thing in the game, which is really neat. Orin continually shows himself to be very drimage, very much about Yuna continuing the pilgrimage. We don't have we don't really have much in the way of established reason for that within the game. We know that he made his promise to promises to Braska and to Jekt to see them along the pilgrimage. To try to defeat Sin. But we don't have any other any other stated reason for why he would be so driven to be like, okay, so what about the pilgrimage? What about the pilgrimage? What about the pilgrimage every time something happens? But given the fact that she is a young summoner, and some of these things that are happening are really crazy and even faith-shaking, like especially for Waka, but for, for all the devout of Yevon in the party, I, I really think that he is he's doing a good job. He doesn't, he's not forcing it on not forcing it on her. He's just making her think about the fact that this pilgrimage is is sort of the important thing, right? So what about the pilgrimage, right? Stuff has happened, but what about the pilgrimage? Stuff has happened, but what about the pilgrimage? And it's sort of helping her stay focused. And in this case, even though he was like, well, we just, we should continue the pilgrimage, there, the other people, in the, the, the devout of Yevon in the group, Yuna and Lulu and Waka all want to go to the church and sort of face face the music. <laughs> Not the hymn. I feel like there's a joke there that I could have made and I busted it. Anyway, they all want to, to, to try to reconcile with the church rather than necessarily openly defy it. And Orin's just like, 
all right, because it's still just they they basically want to reconcile with the church on their way to continue the pilgrimage. Orin is Orin's very opinionated in general. He's he's very he states his opinions very strongly. He he is a very stern guidance counselor basically, but ultimately he leaves the decisions up to the young people that are are more or less in his charge. I like Orin a lot. And he just he just gets cooler as the game goes on. I'm going to take a moment to save here. And listen to the hymn, because it's so good. I can't remember if we actually heard the Makalania Hymn of the Faith while we were at the Faith. If not, that's an interesting is that whole inconsistency. Yes, it is Yevon's gift. It soothes the hearts of the faithful. Sometimes the animations in this game feel a little fast. That is one of those times where she does Say, the, the something Yevon weird prayer. In the air. Some kind of bad Fireflies? vibes or something. No, oh. I'm just hearing the song. Maybe I'm coming down with something. I've got a fever, and the only cure is more is cowbell. Sydney? The face. Oh. Huh? Hasn't this already been explained to him? The faith? What? It can sing? Of course it can. Don't be a fool. <laughs> Duh. Person entombed in stone singing all day makes perfect sense. Say, isn't the ground shaking? This is interesting. We've got two people who are like, something's weird, something strange is going on, WTF. <laughs> First time a non albed called me that. Oh, and another thing about that cutscene, it, it, this, this is kind of, this is a pretty big low point for everyone. But we have, it, it's, it's, it's for, for the faithful in the party, because we definitely have, we have, we have like a line, Orin is talking about totally going against Yevon, so he's definitely not faithful. Titus is not faithful. He only ever heard of Yevon when he first came here, and this whole thing is still weird to him. Uh, not Lulu. Riku is not faithful. She's Albed. She's very science-minded. She doesn't necessarily have anything against Yevon, but she also is not not blindly into the faith and such. Whereas Waka, Yuna, and Lulu were were orphans, basically more or less raised by the faithful of... I mean, they were definitely raised by the faithful of Yevon in one capacity or another. And we don't get an exact... We don't get any exact detailed description of, of who exactly did the raising in the wake of their parents' death. But they were definitely taken in by people who were devout followers of Yevon and raised that way. And so they they were raised to believe that way. So we have this we have this three-on-three -three face-off with Kamari just standing silent in the corner like, whatever. It's all good. So the faithful are at a low point where they've just been declared heathens. And Orin is not... An optimistic kind of guy. He's got the focus drive thing going on. So in that cutscene, it was Titus and Riku who were sort of the optimism <laughs> pep talk, optimism pep talk, cheery people, which is sort of Riku and Titus tend towards that anyway. This place smells different now. Another indicator that something Jamari is off. Jamari not know if this good or bad. Ooh, treasure chest. Hidden treasure chest. Sweet. Level 2 key sphere. I'm alright with that. What was I saying? Ah, yes. Riku, Riku and Titus are the cheery pep talk people, and they had their cheery pep talk moment. I'm sure that Maester Micah will listen to us. Sounds like you're trying to convince yourself, honey. Jack used to sing this song. <laughs> yeah, over and over. <laughs> but not this good, that's for sure. Another trait you share. Uh, what? You were listening? Yeesh, can I get a little privacy? Your singing reminded me of Spira. Oh, right. You're not originally from Xanarkin, are you? You homesick? Maybe. 
Say, how'd you get this anarchind anyway? Sin? Uh-huh. I thought so. That proved it. Sin was the link between Xanarkand and Spira. Which means, if we kill Sin, I'll never be able to go home. Lots of interesting stuff going on with that conversation and associated flashback. Orin says, Jekt used to sing this song, the Hymn of the Faith, which, interestingly enough, is now silent? Weird. Anyway, Jack used to sing the Hymn of the Faith. Titus remembers this, which means he Jekt sang the Hymn of the Faith before Titus left. Or, sorry, before he disappeared from Xanarkand. Right? So this was a song that at least one person in Xanarkand, in old Xanarkand, a thousand years ago, sang. Another another mysterious connection, along with the 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 Yevon prayer thing that Titus knew as a blitzball symbol, like blitzball victory thing. Um, the b between the between the blitzball victory Yevon prayer thing and the hymn of the faith, we now have two connections between his thousand year old Xanarkand and modern Spira, which they're both related to the Church of Yevon though only one is related to Blitzball and the other one is related personally to Titus because it was his dad who sang this song. But the timeline there is interesting. Titus heard Jekt singing the song before Jekt disappeared from Thousand-Year-Old Xanarkand. Orin heard Jekt singing the song in modern-day Spira and then went to Xanarkand via Sin somehow and was sort of looking over Titus while he was growing up and had a chance to hear Titus humming this song that his dad had sung when he was a kid, right? But looking at it from Orin's perspective, he was from Spira, and he heard the Hymn of the Faith as a guardian and all that. Like, the Hymn of the Faith was just a thing that was part of the Evan faith. Um, and then he went to Xanarkand and heard it there from Titus's son. Like, how the hell did he know the Hymn of the Faith? And then, And then they both came back when, when, basically at the moment when Sin destroyed Xanarkand a thousand years ago. Very interesting stuff there. There was one other thing I was going to remark is interesting. I don't remember what it was. Alright, sounds like a good time to end the episode. Have a good one.